is in you we live and move and have our being. And we know, Father God, that without you, we can do nothing. Hallelujah. And we give you the praise. We thank you for grace. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, Lord, rightfully, you know enough about the lives of your believers. Oh, Lord not to allow us to come close to you. Oh, yes, Lord, but it's your grace that you bestow upon us. And, Lord, we're not here because we dotted all of our I's, crossed all of our T's. We're subject to failure. But, Lord, through your grace, the very favor of God, hallelujah, that we do not deserve, but we can't approach you without your grace. You're the one that bids us come, hallelujah, and we're grateful unto you, Father God. Bless us now. Stretch forth your arms, Lord, to be about us. Comfort us. Bring us closer to you in spite of the enemy and adversary of our souls. We are saved by grace. Through faith, hallelujah, even faith in your promises. We thank you, Lord, that you've brought salvation nigh through your grace and we love you for it bless us now in this bible study that your name may be held high that men will know what your grace is hallelujah we thank you for your blood your spirit your goodness your kindness unto the children of men and lord will be careful in giving you praise honor and glory for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Truly, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. The writer said, great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. And we honor him and thank him for who he is and what he means to us. Amen. There shouldn't be too much that happens uh, in a given day that uh, triggers in our hearts and minds that we are saved by grace. Hallelujah. The Lord had every reason, legally, if you will, to bypass us. Go on down the road, look for somebody else. But I'm glad, and I'm sure you're glad, that he stopped and extended his grace and allowed us to be saved. The writer said, life now is sweet, and my joy is complete, for I'm saved, saved. Save. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. My, my. And we honor him today. Amen. I started something um, in the last Bible uh, class that I taught. Uh, we've been interrupted because of our uh, diocese coming together. And uh, it called for your pastor to be out of town. And um, the assistant pastor took over the Bible class and taught. And uh, before I get back into what I started, I, I, I just want to point out in another area. Um, and that is, if you would turn over there, 1 Samuel. 
1 Samuel. Samuel is an ex extensive chapter, very full of detail. Amen. But I want to uh, grab our attention for chapter number four. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I could make reference and perhaps will as we get into chapter four, uh, some things in chapter number two, dealing with Eli and his sons, but that will come uh, to fruition. But chapter four, and we might do a little more reading than usual. Amen. But I want to uh, talk about how the Lord uh, is establishing his people during this period. Uh, if we go all the way back to chapter number one, we can see how the Lord uses this great woman of the Bible. What's her name? Anybody? Hannah. Hannah. Amen. Um, and how he used her for his purpose. She had to cry a little bit and uh, be in wonderment, almost like, Lord, what you doing to me? Um, my my husband's wife um, is very fruitful and it seems like she's having children left and right <laughs> and Lord I don't have any and she looks at me and smirks whatever that means and she winks at me like I'm ahead of you and our husband thinks more of you than he does, or thinks more of me than he does you. So th there was this uncomfortableness that this woman of God had. I'm talking about Hannah. And you know how she um, was praying unto the Lord. Her lips was moving. <laughs> but there was no sound. There was no sound. And I know how, uh, how many know how to pray? Don't let your hand go up quick, like you ought to. <laughs> it's an everyday experience where we should say, Lord, teach us how to pray. Amen. Amen. But she was praying and not making a sound, but her lips were moving. Amen. And it had the appearance as though something was wrong with her. What was the feeling that was wrong with her? Thought she was drunk. Amen. Lips moving and no sound. She wasn't drunk. <laughs> there are times when you fall before the Lord you don't make a sound. It's that uh, unaudible uh, expression. It's just you and the Lord. He speaks to you. You don't hear his voice all the time. Loud. And he ain't drunk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's a communication that's known by God and through God when we get before him and don't say an audible word, but it's in our hearts, my, my. And you may listen around when we gather for prayer. You, you, you may hear somebody rapidly, and that's their call but rapidly talking to God and get loud with it. 
and make sense with it. Amen. But the Lord hasn't moved on you like that. My, my. Not, not then. He may call on you to express yourself in prayer. But there are times not a mumbling word is heard. But you're still praying unto the God of our salvation. Isn't prayer sweet? Really, there's nothing like it. Some folk may make fun of your posture and your facial expressions if there be any. But I want you to know there's nothing in all of life like your prayer unto God. Nothing. Nothing. He hears you before you pray. He hears you if you don't use any words audibly. He sees and he understands. He hears you even if you make mistakes and you use the wrong words. He still hears you. Knows what you're saying as your heart is just open unto the Lord. He reads you. He understands you. My, my, my. And there are times when you're so earnest with the Lord. Amen. You start speaking in tongues. And you may not know what you're saying, but he knows, doesn't he? Hallelujah. And he helps you pray. He can pray through you. Glory. My, 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 my. Like solemn assembly, laying on our faces between the pews, crying out unto the Lord. Amen. There's nothing like prayer. And may I say this? There is no substitute. I hope you hear me. You may look for something other than prayer. You won't find it. Well, pastor, it's my knees. They hurt. and um, I, I, I can't get down. Sit in your seat. Amen. There is no substitute. Don't even look for some other expression. Amen. Some old writer said prayer is the key. Ooh. To heaven and faith unlocks the door. It's more than words. It's a communication on the highest level. I don't care about the clamor of this world and the business of your schedule. You can be on your job and, and typing and uh, writing or lifting, whatever it might be, and still be in prayer with the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be in the midst of a battle and the enemy is raging. Amen. And he's trying to get you off track. Amen. But sometimes all you can do is moan. And the Lord understands the moan. And he will fight for you. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Come on, Hannah. Girl, do your thing. Do your thing. Stay faithful unto God. Moan if you have to. But the writer said, don't stop praying, for the Lord is nigh. Don't stop praying, he'll hear your cry. For the Lord has promised and his word is true. Don't stop praying. What will he do? He'll answer you. So keep on, keeping on in the face of the Lord. 
Amen. God's going to reward this woman. Don't worry about her. And sometimes he, he may have you in the same situation. I'm not talking about it has to be about a child. It could be about something else. And he wants you to wait before him. Don't say an audible word. Just wait before him. Be of good courage. He'll strengthen your heart. My, my, wait, I say. Can I just read a, a verse or two a little earlier? Uh, verse or two before chapter 4 of 1 Samuel. Chapter 1. Uh, first Samuel. I'm really interested in chapter 4, but um, there's some things I think we ought to notice again. Verse number 12, and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Can you imagine? What's wrong with that woman? Sometimes your own folk don't know what's going on with you. Hmm. Maybe, maybe she's fasting too much. Got a little delirium. Whew. There's nothing like prayer. Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake where? In her heart. Only her lips moved. But her voice was not heard, not on the outside. God heard her on the inside. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. You don't, you don't drink early in the morning if you're an expert drinker. You might, but you don't drink early in the morning. She hadn't been drinking. Hmm. In other words, sometimes folk don't understand you. They might even think you're off on the deep end. Take a break, brother. Amen. Go get your glass of water. But don't stop me. The Lord may want to take me to another level in him. He may want to get me in a position to tell me something that he doesn't tell anybody else. Excuse me, Hannah, but I've been listening to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I've read the story a time or two or so. Amen. Again, now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been... <sighs> I'll say it another way. She had been drinking. She wasn't drinking. Her mind was on the Lord. Sweet Jesus. I'll just read a little bit more. I didn't intend to do this, but it's tasting good to me. And Eli said unto her, how long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. He was convinced. And sometimes people take the quick route when they don't understand what's going on. Amen. Stop for a moment. Pray for the person. Amen. Could it be that the Lord will give you understanding as to what's going on? There's there's something special about the Lord ministering unto you. And you may be in the deepest of your test, but the Lord can minister to you while you are in 
the deepest area of your test and you feel like nobody understands. Thank you, Jesus. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. How many have, you don't have to raise your hand, poured out your soul before the Lord? You don't need a crowd for that. You don't need a bunch of people and get lost in their hallelujahs. But just get in that posture before the Lord and he can sweep you off your feet. Glory. There's no substitute for prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She poured out her soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid uh, for a daughter of Belial. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. <sighs> he began seemingly to get a little understanding. But God singled this woman out. And she had to pay. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I want to get closer and closer to God. You better get ready. You can't get close to him without folk misunderstanding you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You, you, you are subject, amen, to expressing yourself differently when you enter into prayer with the Lord. He can talk to you like no other period in time and give you understanding. But folk outside what's happening in your life may not understand you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Verse number 18, and she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman, woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Hallelujah. And they rose up uh, in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord, what? Remembered her. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord had it planned that he was going to bring forth a leader from her. And we don't understand fully the mind of God. But woman, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you in a special way. She didn't understand it. But perhaps as the Lord began to use her, amen, she got an inkling of what he was doing in her life. Sometimes the Lord has to set you aside. Amen. And when he sets you aside, he wants to use you in a special way. Hallelujah. Now I might say this. And it won't cost you anything. If you, through reading your word, can understand a little bit from reading how the Lord pulls you away, the next time you sense him tugging at you, don't try to correct him. Just follow him and his leading. 
Sometimes he'll tell you, take another day. Take another day. Now, I'm not the Lord, and I'm not telling you, but sometimes he may want to use you in a special way. And he'll tell you, just take another day. Who's going to understand you? Perhaps nobody. If anything, some may think that you're kind of on shaky ground. But there's, there's no walk like walking with God. Amen. Ah, uh, her husband knew her. She was his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore, it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had con what? conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel. Samuel. Samuel saying because I have what you say sis amen somebody said he may not come when you want him <laughs> our way our time our thinking is not like God's amen he wanted her to stay in school a little, little while longer and suffer the scornful laughing and joking about her person. But that's all right. The Lord's going to use her in a mighty way. She's going to love this boy. And, and, and mothers love her, their daughters. Say amen, mothers. But there's something about, especially in this day, that particular day, you got a boy from the Lord. Ooh, Lord, what you going to do? <laughs> what you going to do? And that doesn't mean he comes here with wings. If he did, I'd run. Thank you, Jesus. He comes here rough and tough and raw and in disorder. Hallelujah. You have to live the life in front of him or her whoever, whatever, bring them up in it. Thank you, Jesus. What if you started speaking in tongues and rejoicing in the Lord when he was 20? He needs prep time. He needs to go to the prayer meetings, fall asleep on the pew, wake up when the preaching takes place. He needs to learn them songs, the, the words of the songs himself himself and this is what this child this is what's happening to him can I say it in short he's being brought up in the church hallelujah it makes it a little little easier I wasn't going to go this way amen thank you Jesus and the Lord begins to call him at the right time. Thank you, Jesus. And he fully doesn't understand that. Chapter number three, I'm trying to make a long story short. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. Did I catapult? Yes, I did. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. This is why what was written was priceless. There was no seemingly ministering and visions and thoughts, etc. Sometime all you have is the word. The word, the lonely word. Amen. Sometime all there is in the refrigerator is some bread. 
you got to survive on it. Mm. So learn how to eat it. You can make bread pudding. You can make toast. You can make a sandwich. Take what you have and make what you want when it comes to the bread of life, which is the word of God. Amen. I mean, when you pop the refrigerator, you know ain't nothing in there. <laughs> and those few little pieces of bread look so good. Look what he says. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. The Lord, with that word that's there, he can encourage you and give you enough to give to somebody else. He can point you with that bread in the direction he wants you and I to go. Thank God for his word. Woo. I might add, not only was it precious in those days, isn't it precious now? Right now. Hallelujah. Oh, the word of the Lord is precious. If you can memorize it. Somebody said, Pastor, I'm way beyond that. Uh, my children are grown. I can't get in like spelling bees and, and, and thoughts and uh, memorization program. Yes, you can. The Lord is my light. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, what did they do? Stumbled, Stumbled and fell. Though in hope should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though wars should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble. Yeah. The word is precious any time you get it. And sometimes that's all you'll have. And I declare unto you, it will see you through your midnight. It'll see you through your storm. And that is the precious word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. I hear you. And the Lord called Samuel. Now this is that child that was long time coming. If Hannah had anything to do with it, he would have been an older man about this time. But he's still a youngster. Amen. And the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here I am. He thought Eli was calling him. And that can happen. Amen. Waking everybody up. Boy, go on back to sleep. Ah. For thou couldst me, or callest me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again. And he went and laid down. Now this happened more than once. And after a period, the man of God knew what was going on. What did he say? Next time? 
Wow. Is that verse number 10? And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak for thy servant. Hear it. Sometimes we can tell the Lord about shortcuts, you know, but you got to wait on him. Get everything that he's trying to teach you. Get it all because you're going to need it. You're going to need it like the Bible says. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and I thank God that he had a mother that perhaps teared up but still yet gave that child to the Lord. Amen. You, 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 you can't do good if you don't yield to God. You got to give it. If you sense the Lord is calling, I remember at 16, I took my grandmama to, to preach. She was popular in certain areas as an elderly woman. She was a fiery preacher. She'd preach and dance. Dance and preach. As I emphasized to you about her, she wouldn't preach behind the podium, on the rostrum. She'd come down, put her Bible on the corner, of the communion table, open it up and read it and preach from the floor. She was an elderly person. I wonder where she got that. And when I found out when she was born, then I put two and two together. She was alive. What's the queen's name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth when ladies' dresses made dust on the floor. Amen. If they had stockings, they were white, cotton. Amen. When men were preferred to take the chief positions and not the women, she was raised during that period. What about us? Lord, help. So that's why she stood on the church floor and not on the rostrum. She was tutored that way. She was taught that way. When I got enough gumption to ask her, I was at least eight years old. I looked up at her. She was 5'2". I looked up at her. <laughs> you know, Graham, why don't you preach up there? Why you preach down there? And I didn't understand, but she gave me an answer. She said, oh, that's for the men. And I went on back. I got an answer. I didn't understand it, but I got an answer, and that's all I was asking for. Wow. But she could preach up a storm. Her bobby pins would come out, and the curls would unfurl and hang down, bounce like that. She would dance and preach and sing and dance and preach and sing. She was a fireball. But I was raised in it. Amen. Bring your children to the church so they can get used to the dancing. I've watched them bring their children for the first time when they were grown a few years. And I'd watch the saints, when the power hit them, they would scream or speak or sing or dance, and it frightened those that weren't brought up in it. And they would cry. But after a while, if mama kept coming and bringing them, they'd get used to it. Amen. And hopefully one day, cry out, for it. My, my. All right, I'm catapulting. At least I think I am. Well, God's man 
had a couple of sons. Anybody know what their names were? Hophni, 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 and Phineas. If I can say it another way, they wasn't saved. <laughs> they just wasn't saved. They did things that they weren't supposed to do. Their, their father was the preacher, and they thought they could do about what they wanted to do take more food than what they were supposed to take and then commit sins with other women they thought they were at liberty with that but God marked it down he might not come like you think he's coming but he chooses his time and the kind of action he will impose my my and one of the things he made mention uh, chapter 2 I'm looking at verse number 31 behold the days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thy father's house that there shall not be an old man in thine house in other words, your family, it, they may have boys, but they won't live long. I'm cutting them off. Ooh, they won't live long. Yes, indeed. You'll see it in chapter 4. I'm going to try to skip around here if I can. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines pitched in Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. Uh, it's, it's wartime. Thank you, Jesus. I'm thinking how important Phineas and his brother would have been helpful to their father and to the people but they got caught up in something um, and they were very unfaithful unto God the Lord could have used them thank you Jesus verse number three and when the people were coming to the camp the elders of Israel said wherefore hath the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us. I'm going to jump around uh, just a little bit. They were trying to protect uh, this shrine. Uh, but the Lord can protect it himself. Amen. That is the ark of God. Verse number 10, And the Philistine fought, and Israel was smitten, and they fled every man into his tent. And there was a very great slaughter, and there fell of Israel 30,000, this is major, footmen. And the ark of God was what? Taken. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas. I told you I'm going to cut them off. You may have walked away from me when I was talking and forgot about it, but I didn't forget. My, my, you won't have any more old men. Woo. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent and with earth upon his head. And when he came, lo, Eli, set upon the seat by the wayside watching well let me jump down here because something verse number 17 and uh i'm going to ask you to read verse number 17 i hope you got it turned chapter 4 first samuel read and there are dead 
and the ark of God sounds like they're losing. This is bad. Read on. 18. Who died? Who? Who? Eli. Wait a minute, who died? Eli. Eli. Yeah, broke, his neck. broke his neck. If you were to scribe, if you were to describe his physical appearance, what would you say? <laughs> say it. He was fat. <laughs> who said that? <laughs> Sister Boy. <laughs> calling people fat. <laughs> no. He was fat and no doubt he may have had his feet up leaning back when he got the news that his sons were killed. He slipped some way. Amen. Fell back. Broke his neck. And he died. My, 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 my. Uh, verse number 19, and his daughter-in-law, Phineas' wife, was with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings uh, that the ark of God was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she, she bowed herself and travailed for her pains came upon her. What was going on, sisters? She went into labor, didn't you? That was enough to send her into early labor. Learning that the men in her life, especially her husband, died. My, 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 my. Take the next verse. Read. Fear not. And she named, what she named the child? Ichabod. Amen. It means something. The glory. Now, when you hear somebody begin to talk about Ichabod, you better check yourself. Make sure the glory is not gone. The glory is gone. Jesus, that's one of the most lonely feelings for a true saint of God that there is. No glory. It's gone. It sounds like it's, <laughs> amen. I laid my microphone down. It sounds like an echo. If somebody does say, hallelujah, boom, 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 boom. And the heads on the necks go, look at you. What kind of church do you think this is? Making all that noise. You don't need all that noise to praise God. The glory's gone. Nobody's longing for the glory. They're not hungry for the glory. My, 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 my. And it's not always in a boisterous exhibition hallelujah sometimes sister you look at sister man sometimes sister man and she's not speaking in tongues she's feeling it she's feeling it glory glory don't let the glory leave your house leave your life if you have to throw a couple pieces of uh, wood on the fire, throw them on the fire. Don't let the fire go out. Amen. Glory to Jesus' name. You may have to separate yourself from the rest of the folk. Amen. Amen. Turn your plate over. Just don't let the fire go out. Don't lose the glory. glory. My, my. Don't you remember how you used to run around the church? 
Folk used to take their fan when you came by. And they would say, go on, sister. Don't let the glory go out. Keep the glory. I don't want the name Ichabod. It's depressing. I want to hear somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to hear the song, Jesus, you brought me all the way. I want to hear something upbeat. Amen. About the great exploits of the Lord. Glory to Jesus' name. My, my, my. Yes. Uh, those sons are gone. They didn't mean the Lord any good. Amen. They made their daddy look bad. Amen. Amen. I don't know if they were too big or what, but he didn't check them. They should have been checked. Leave those women alone. You two sit down for a while. Don't do anything till I get, tell you to get up. My, my. But he wouldn't check them. And the Lord took them. Amen. And for his part, that was negative. Amen. The Lord took him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. I'm looking back and saying, Hannah, did the Lord deliver you at the right time? <sighs> the right time. God needed, he needed Samuel. Is that right? He needed Samuel. And Samuel reigned as high priest until the Lord took him. Amen. Hallelujah. He did great exploits before the Lord. And that's, that's necessary. That's what ought to be. Thank God that there are men and women. Hear me well. Yet the Lord will use. Thank you, Jesus. I came up, brothers and sisters, in our diocese, there weren't any women district elders and suffragan bishops. Whoa. Look at somebody and tell them times have changed. Some of, some of you don't want to say it, but it's true. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's time. It's time. Thank you, Jesus. And they know how to pray. They know how to get the mind of God. Thank you, Jesus. And we're grateful unto the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Could, could you? Yes. I, I almost felt that, too. Man, it was that sound. I tell you. It sounded hurtful. Go ahead and ask the question into the microphone. Oh. Um, yeah, I wanted to know if there was a female suffocate bishop. Yes, ma'am. There are female. I've named at least one, and I want to name another one. Thank you, Jesus. And I, I feel it's more than me. I feel the Lord is prompting me. Amen. And at the right time, Amen. he'll point out the person and, and, and we'll have another one. Amen. All right. People that will stand for the Lord, that will stand for his word and have the kind of character that can carry it out. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Our time is about gone. Thank you, Jesus. And um, we just may have to continue uh, in this. Let's see what the Lord says. One of the areas that I really appreciate, and that is the Old Testament. Amen. 
Anybody know uh, where First and Second Samuel fall? What it's called overall? First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings. Amen. And there was silence in heaven. History. Israel's history. Thank you, Jesus. History. It almost follows, slightly different, but almost follows uh, when we talk about uh, the Gospels and the history of the church uh, in the book of Acts and then the Pauline epistles. Amen. Romans. And if you got us, before you appreciate um, the epistles, you, you've got to first start at Romans. It's the gateway to the Pauline epistles. Amen. But we won't dilly there. But um, we just may continue in regards to um, um, this area of Israel's history. It's fascinating. Always it's fascinating. Amen. Any questions uh, in regards to uh, this area that we dealt with this evening? Any additions? Any observations?